how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering the Marvels. Star of the Marvels says historic box office flop is not her problem. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. From Screen Rant, that's for Bob Iger. Iman Balani gives her very candid response to the Marvel's box office failure. So it's not her problem. She's already been paid as far as she's concerned. This is a crazy response because for one thing, it's fine to say, look, I don't have any hangups. I appreciated the job. You need to be a little bit more humble. You can't just say, well, it's the problem of the head of the Disney company. It's also Kevin Feige's problem, but it's also her co-star's problem. It's also problems for her agents, for her personal manager. It's a problem for the producers, for the executive producers, potentially for the investors in the movie. Not like she can change all of that just by being nice. It's not like Iman Balani herself ruined the movie. Most reviewers say her work in the movie was better than the other actress's work in the movie. And that's great, but you do have to be a little bit conscious about the people that you work with and about the company that you're working for. And also the fact that you represent a branded studio when you work on a project like this. Hundreds of millions of dollars were spent just on this movie, but the results of this movie has already impacted other Marvel projects, other projects getting delayed, other projects getting reworked. It's a very serious thing when there's a major financial failure, which is why it's good to talk to your publicist, it's good to talk to your manager, it's good to talk to the studio and figure out a publicity strategy, especially when something goes wrong. Figure out how everyone is going to be on the same page, everyone is going to make everyone else look good, because it's important to always portray competency for the people that you're working with and also for yourself. Rachel Ziegler had a similar problem with Disney, got Disney in a lot of trouble and got herself a lot of aggravation and also upset a lot of classic Disney fans and even current Disney fans with ridiculous statements she made about Snow White. From CNBC, Disney's box office problems ramp up pressure on CEO Bob Iger and studio chief Alan Bergman. So yeah, Bob Iger is actually in trouble over this, as is Alan Bergman. It doesn't mean Bob Iger is getting thrown out. Alan Bergman may have some problems. We'll have to see what happens. But when there's a historic box office failure and people are starting to doubt the Marvel brand and you now open up potential competition with DC, potential competition with Sony, potential competition with other studios who could do superhero based projects because the Marvel brand is burned. This is a multi-billion dollar thing that affects the livelihoods of a lot of people. The Marvels has done terrible so far. Right now, it's at $161 million. They were hoping that number would be about double by now. Yesterday, I did a video called The Marvels Director Blame for Biggest MCU Flop in History. Now, this kind of story is getting picked up in other places. This just came out a couple of hours ago from The Hollywood Reporter, why Marvels director Nia DaCosta bailed on the cast and crew screening. The cast had a good excuse for missing the event. But what about the director and co-writer? She was a co-writer for the Marvels. From Screen Rant, Ms. Marvel actress Iman Balani responds to the Marvels box office failure with an incredibly candid remark, saying she's happy with the movie. Iman Balani weighs in on the Marvels box office failure. The latest Marvel Cinematic Universe movie has underperformed at the box office over two weekends since its release earning $65 million domestically for a total worldwide take of $161 million. Considering the Marvel's budget is reportedly around $270 million, although that doesn't include all of it, but they spent a lot of money on this movie. The Marvel movie has not yet earned back its budget, let alone turned a profit. A movie is considered profitable if it earns more than double its production budget, so the Marvels needs to earn roughly $430 million. This is a very rough calculation. Yes, at $430 million, they would get back not half, they get back around less than half because of the international market. They get less from the international market, plus there's a big promotional budget. On the other hand, a film is valuable to be sold for streaming rights, for broadcast rights, for cable rights. 
even for things like physical media, like Blu-rays and other formats. However, absolutely at a minimum for the film to break even to say $430 million is even on the low side. It probably would need to be quite a bit more than that. In an interview with Yahoo Entertainment, Bolani, who stars in the movie as Kamala Khan, aka Ms. Marvel, was asked about the Marvel's box office performance and the focus on the MCU movie's earnings. She responded by saying, quote, that's for Bob Iger, referring to Disney's CEO, before going on to say she's happy with the finished product. Bellani concluded it's a fun movie and she's happy to share it with audiences. She said this, I don't want to focus on something that's not even in my control because what's the point? That's for Bob Iger. The box office has nothing to do with me. I'm happy with the finished product and the people that I care about enjoyed the film. Even that kind of a statement, like the people that I cared about enjoyed the film, there are Marvel fans who did go to see this movie who were disappointed with it. There are Marvel fans who declined seeing this movie because they know it's an extension of the diversity push to change the entire nature of what the Marvel franchise has been about since it was created, and they're unhappy. And the truth of it is, is if you're going to respect the public, you do have to consider whether or not the public is happy with what you did. She goes on to say, it's genuinely a good time watching this movie, and that's all we can ask for with these films. It has superheroes. It takes place in space. It's not that deep, and it's about teamwork and sisterhood. It's a fun movie, and I'm just so happy that I can share it with people. 80% of what she said is absolutely fine. The 20% that's not so good should have been fixed before she said it. Why the Marvels is a box office bomb. There are a number of contributing factors. I do blame the director a lot, but everyone who worked on this should never have made this movie. Perhaps the biggest factor contributing to the Marvel's box office performing below what might have been expected is the SAG after strike, which only concluded a few days before the movie's release. As a result, Villani and co-stars Brie Larson and Tayona Paris were unable to promote the MCU movie. Instead of the star's voices, the main promotion for the Marvels prior to its release were the middling to negative early reviews, which criticized the movie's villain and plot, among other aspects. Beyond the Marvel's reviews and lack of cast promo, there are large factors at play, like the growing dissatisfaction with the MCU and superhero movies in general. Marvel Studios' output in recent years has been wildly varied in terms of its quality, with some movies and shows excelling, while others have earned the studio some of their lowest earnings and ratings. It's not necessarily a problem exclusive to Marvel, as Warner Brothers Discovery and DC had their own problems with The Flash at the box office this summer. However, it does prove that audiences are more discerning about what superhero content they're willing to consume. Audiences want to see what they want to see. If you take Avengers Endgame and then try to turn it into a girl power movie, it's not going to work. It just, there's nothing you can do to make that work. If you go to an Italian restaurant and they say, I'm sorry, we have no Italian food, but why don't you try this Chinese food? Maybe you'll eat some of the Chinese food, but not if you specifically went to the Italian restaurant to get Italian food. It really is that simple. If you try to get a vegetarian to eat cheeseburgers with you, they're going to be offended and it's not going to work. It's not going to be cheeseburger fatigue. It's going to be because they're a vegetarian. They don't want to eat that. How about a vegan? No, vegans don't want to eat that either, but it's good for them, but it's diverse. It doesn't matter how diverse the cheeseburgers are. If people don't get what they're expecting to get, especially if they used to get what they were supposed to get when the product used to be on brand, for example, when Marvel films used to be Marvel films and not this new take on Marvel films, customers are going to be particularly turned off by it and they will not support it. One thing Disney could do and Disney has to do is immediately cut their budgets by 60 to 70 to maybe even 80% if they're going to keep on abusing their audiences this way. There are people that went to see the Marvels. 65% of the people who went to see the Marvels were men. They said they were making these movies because of representation. Representation did not go see the movie. Men who were fans of Marvel, who are absolute diehard fans of Marvel, don't care how bad the project is, don't care how off-brand it is, if it's got a Marvel logo on it, they will go see it. Those people did go see the Marvels. 
They're guys mostly. If you want to get everyone else, which is the larger version of the market, you've got to get a compelling product to them and communicate to that market, hey, look what we've got. It's really good. If they're not going to do that, they might still be able to make some money by making a 50 or a $60 million Marvel movie instead of a $300 million Marvel movie. They'll still get the diehard people to go there. Of course, they shouldn't do this. They should go back to what they did when the films used to succeed. Pick up the phone. Call Ike Perlmutter, the former CEO of Marvel Entertainment. Say, hey, Ike, would you please come in for a meeting and tell us exactly what to do? I am sure he's already spent hundreds of hours thinking about how you could actually just bring back the kinds of Marvel movies that people want to see. Literally, that's all they would have to do to fix this. Maybe there'd be one more step of complication. Nothing really beyond that. It could be done over the course of like a couple of weeks. They would know what they should be doing. But they're not likely going to do that because the entire priority for Bob Iger at Disney is to push this diversity representation agenda, which has nothing to do with good storytelling. All told, Villani certainly shouldn't be concerned with the box office of the Marvels. No, yet she really actually should be concerned with the box office of the Marvels. You can't have a career. She's a young woman. She's like 21 years old. You can't have a career going from one failure to another failure. And yes, while the Marvels was a failure, and there are people in media saying, Nia DaCosta, your work on the Marvels should be considered a success because you're a black woman and you have the largest grossing movie for any black woman of all time as a director. But it wasn't financially viable. And it's not good to try and build a career that way. Yes, there are companies, there are investors that will throw money at projects that make no financial sense because you're breaking a glass ceiling or something like that. But of course you can't build a career based on that. It's not good for the audience. It's not good for the business. And it's not good for the talent. Villani's performance as Ms. Marvel in the movie, they said her performance was great. It was excellent. But you have to take your expressive talent and tie it in with the commercial benefit of what you're doing. And you also need to please enough of the audience that what you're doing is viable. These aren't art films. This is not a $300 million art film that you do just for yourself or for you and your friends or for some college project. This is a business, and these people are supposed to be building a career. The entertainment industry and business in general need to get back to focusing on merit. If you do a good job and you work really hard and you do your best, but it's still a financial failure, that's okay. But you need to change what you're doing. You need to fine tune things a little bit better. For this actress, she should not play this character anymore in the future, even if she enjoys it, if it's a financial disaster. Because as people used to tell people, like, you'll get typecast as this. Being typecast means she's going to miss out on other opportunities for commercially viable projects. And when you're producing commercial art, you need your work to be accepted artistically, but also commercially for it to last long term. When a project doesn't work financially, when a business doesn't work financially, it doesn't just affect the owner or the CEO of the business. It can affect everyone. This movie alone could trigger massive layoffs at Disney. They've already had severe layoffs. I don't know if they're going to have more layoffs or not, but I really wouldn't be surprised. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.